Oh, am I glad you stopped by. I'm not here for any other reason. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday. It is July 25th. Now, we're going to do the same thing we do in every show. We're going to be looking at stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. We call these hot penny stocks. And I'm looking for the heat in these hot penny stocks by looking at the charts first. I'm looking for charts that look like they're ready to break out, that have a lot of volume coming in, that have a lot of price activity. When I find a hot chart, then I go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings, looking for that catalyst. And when I get the two, there's a stock I'm interested in and a stock I may share with you. I say may because I find more than three and I got to narrow it down. And I've done it. I've narrowed it down to three I'm going to share with you today. First ticker we're going to take a look at is Niches, ticker N-I-C-H. Now, we did look at this back in November. And when we looked at it, she was doing one sort of operations. And it appears they're still doing that, but I really can't see a lot of activity. I see news, but I don't see a lot of activity. But they did come out with some big news here about a transition into another sector. I don't think they're abandoning the one. I think they're adding the other and it looks hot. They've got the last piece to their puzzle now. And the charts are ready to break out. They are an atypical breakout chart, perfectly set up, waiting for that hot catalyst. And I think we got it. NICH finished today at 0028 with a little bit over 33% gains. I think she got some of that after market. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got both those green ticks, verified profile and transfer agent we're always talking about. They're important. There's a lot of validated information represented by these green ticks being verified behind the scenes. And when you're trading a pink on the OTZ, you want as much validated information as you can get. That's why those two are so important. So what is this company about? Well, this is what they were doing back then and supposedly still doing now. Niches Inc. is a diversified company that specializes in creating merchandise, manufacturing high-end luxury brands, goods, and collectibles for influencers and celebrities. It's a niche market. <laughs> Niches, right? Niches is focused on sports clothing, athleisure brands, sustainable products, and technology. We are also taking tremendous steps to protect Niches and our clients' intellectual property by innovating technology to help prevent counterfeiting. And they're primarily talking about clothing. And that's what we really focused in on in November. They had some new ones come out. They have like three or four different ways to protect clothing lines from being duplicated, counterfeited. One is just a tag that you sew on and you scan it with your phone and somehow it can verify the item. Another is the secret coding stitching that they do in the fabric of your clothing. One little tiny area will have a pattern in it that they can recognize as proving this is authentic. Now they say they make a lot of clothing for celebrities, influencers. They say they have a manufacturer overseas. Not theirs, but they have used to it and they can make a lot of whatever it is they want to do. Problem is the revenues aren't reflecting any business. For all the news I read and all they say they're doing, I don't see any revenues. But now, with this new catalyst, I think we could. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, let's see, we had a little bit of a jump, not much. She went from 1.7 million to 2.2 million. A little up is better than a little down. Share structure on the company. Outstanding share count is 344 million. Now they tell us a float down here. They say it's 4.7 million. Well, yeah, maybe back in November of 2021. Probably not that now. Now, you always hear me call the unrestricted shares the float. The way I come to that, when you take the outstanding share count and subtract the restricted shares, these are the shares owned by the insiders. They got a lot, 225 million. Subtract the two, you end up with the unrestricted shares, which are the shares on the open market, which is the definition of a float. That is your float. That's why I always use it. If the math is right, our float would be about 117 million on this stock. Financials, they're a mess. First off, you got nothing on the annual. And on the quarterly, you might as well have nothing. We've got not $1. <laughs> it's almost that bad though. $1,000. We got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers here. But that's it. 
and take my word for it. You go through the news, you can go to their website. They have a lot of old news on there, not the current news. And you can see lots of news about stuff they're doing with the clothing. But where's the money? I don't know. Disclosures. The only thing we've got over here are their quarterly financials, which is all good. We've got the one that came out for February and the one that came out for May, the most recent one. So if you really want to know about this company, don't worry about the news presses. Don't even go to Google. Seriously. Just start getting into the habit of diving into a 10K or a 10Q. They have all the information about the company in there. Everything. It'll save you a lot of time. So let's take a look at that news now. So, taking my word that they have a lot of news from the past about clothing, most of this news has nothing to do with clothing. Now, the first piece of news I've got here is back in November of last year when we looked at it. This was an update regarding the metaverse. They're bowing out. They said we were thinking about it, but you know, even Meta's losing billions of dollars here. So, we think we're going to let the big boys play in the metaverse. So, they're out of that. Then we get a piece of news about their new way of thinking. The company is expanding into the liquor industry with the launch of Lifestyle of Spirits. They are calling this Tover. Tover is their new whiskey that they are selling. Now they tell us here they are launching this exclusive premium aged whiskey, Tover, with Celebrity Partner. Well, I dove into this and read it. <laughs> the Celebrity Partner is working with the clothing line, not the liquor line and I don't recognize them anyways. Then we have a piece of news about the clothing. Niches Corp announces pivotal collaboration with ALSD and expansion into premium sports sector. Now I thought this was worthy of looking into. They say they're selling clothing, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. This is the Association of Luxury Suite Directors. They are going to be an exclusive vendor providing premium staff clothing for the 2023 ALSD Conference and Trade Show, which has already taken place July 9th through the 11th in Indianapolis. Now, not only did they supply clothes to the staff, but they got the hobnob with the top executives and the decision makers from the world's leading sports franchises, colleges, and universities. That's the sort of trade show it was, so they could easily stir up some more business. In addition to the ALSD collaboration, the company is in exploratory talks with an unnamed Major League Baseball team to expand custom clothing options for their premium fans. So they seem to have things going on. I've read lots of news about things they got going on. I just haven't seen any money yet. And then we have that last piece of news. This is old, actually. This came out on, uh, actually, it's not the last piece of news. I almost forgot. Niches unveils bottle design for the Tover Republic whiskey and confirms production deposits. They don't have the factory, but they have a factory that can make it for them, and they've paid them to make their first line. This is the last piece of news. I forgot it was down here at the bottom. Niches capitalizes on liquor market expansion, attains TTB liquor license, and strategically enters premium whiskey segment. This is that news press that came out on the 25th, today. <laughs> the company has triumphantly secured its liquor license from the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau. This major achievement clears the path for the eagerly awaited debut of their brand new venture, Tover Republic, and the impending unveiling of their premium whiskey brand in the third or early fourth quarter of this year. This strategic move arrives at the time when the global whiskey market continues to thrive, valued at an impressive $59 billion in 2020 and expected to reach $68 billion by 2025. God, that's a lot of booze. Tova Republic, the first gem in Niche's illustrious lineup. Illust <laughs> Glorious lineup. So they've got more liquors planned. So they've got their license. They've got the factory. They've got their bottle design. They've got their whiskey. They've got the green light. They're ready to go. And so is the chart. Checking out the charts for niches to see if we can find some riches. <laughs> We're going to be doing our charting on Thinkorswim. This is a free trading platform you get when you sign up with TD Ameritrade. And hey, that's free too. So this is a six-month, four-hour view for niches. 
Back six months ago in November, around the time we were looking at it, she hit a high of a penny and a half. She fell back into this channel and got stuck there for quite a few months. We've got a strong support and resistance top and bottom. The one at the top is just over a penny. This one here is at 0066. Our other strong support is down here at 0033. Now when she got close to her 200 here, she looked like she was thinking about breaking out. She got up here to 009 and then tricked us came falling down fast and furious, hitting a low of 0011 in May. And since this time, she has just been going sideways, hanging around that 50-day SMA, and now she's broke away. She has hit her head on that resistance at 0033 and has pulled back, and it looks like she wants to get on top of that 200 right there. Osculators, we have a push-off on our PPO. It's been pretty flat for a while. Our MACD also has a push off the signal line and look at all those green bars coming into the picture. And our RSI is on fire. That is at 71.71. I like that number. 20 day, one hour view. So here's our low bubble of 0013. She worked her way off the low over the 50, bouncing off the 200, wrestling with the 50, and now she's crushed that 200. She has gone straight through it. She is riding on her nine day SMA, and here comes a small golden cross with our 20 day SMA crossing the 200, with the 50 day right behind it. That is the big golden cross. So we have power coming right now. Osculators are looking outstanding. All of them look like they are going to the moon right now. That is sweet. Five day, five minute, not a bad chart. We got a little bubble in this corner of 0016, and she hit a high here of 0033 just underneath that resistance. She's been floating on her nine, bouncing off of the 20, leaving the 50 alone. She's a light price, she's buoyant, she's climbing. Osculators, she's still got strength. She's getting a little bouncy, but she is still pushing up. She's had a crossover down and back up. And our RSI here is at 57. I think the chart looks pretty good. She's in good position. All she needs is a little more volume to push up over that 200. The 50 day and the 20 day SMA are gonna follow it, giving it a strong push. I think we could see a run here, folks. N-I-C-H, niches for the riches. Now here's something we never do. We're looking at a rocket stock. This thing launched when the bell went off. I think she hit maybe 150% gains today. If you use your scanners, you saw INPX in Pixian up there. It was running sweet. Now the reason we don't normally look at rocket stocks is because there's normally nothing left for the next day. It surges up and then crashes back down to earth. But Using some of our tools like the Fibonacci, you can determine if the fall was a legitimate fall. I expect a 50% fall off of any run. So if it went 500%, I expect 250% fall. And if it stays at the halfway point, I'm happy. Well, the chart's looking good to me. And even more importantly, this is big news. I mean, literally. The company's already got legitimate business. They're making legitimate revenues. Then they go ahead and make a merger deal with a company that's got this very hot, innovative tech. And the valuation, how much money this deal is worth, is huge. So I think there's a lot of repercussions to come. INPX, she finished today just under 29 cents and just about 90% gains. She's on the NASDAQ. She's free to trade. You can trade her pre-market, after-market. You got to watch these stocks that get hot. There's a lot of activity, pre-market and after-market. So what does this company do right now? Well, I could read this, but that really doesn't say what I want it to. This has a lot of words, but it says what we need to hear. Inpexian is the innovator of indoor intelligence. Think of this as uh, what Google does for outside with their maps. This company does indoors with their intelligence. Indoor intelligence delivers actionable insights for people, places, and things. Combining the power of mapping, positioning, and analytics, NPX and helps to create smarter, safer, and more secure environments. The company's indoor intelligence and industrial real-time location system 
called RTLS. Solutions are leveraged by a multitude of industries to optimize operations, increase productivity, and enhance safety. And that's what they're working on, interior mapping, if you will. Now they've got more going on and we're gonna get to that here in a second. So what was the relative volume around the news today? Explosive, man, explosive, God almighty. She went from 1.8 million to 264 million shares today. Do you think there was some excitement around this company? Do you think some more could be coming? I do. Share structure for INPX. Well, look at that. I don't know what the float is, but we know this much, right? It's under 26.6 million, never higher. And that's not a bad float. So when you think about this, this company did, how many shares did they move today? 264, 264 million. So they had to move this 10 times. These shares had to be sold and resold 10 times. They've only got 26 million. How do you sell 260 million if you've only got 26 million? That's called supply and demand. When there's not enough shares to meet the volume, you can start holding your shares and asking for more. And you can see prices run like AMC without a short squeeze. There's just not a lot of shares to go around. Financials for the company. As you can see, they're making money nicely. It's growing every year, six, nine, 15, 19 million. Don't forget those three zeros up there. Quarterly, uh, they're doing between two, five million. I mean, she dropped a little in this last quarter, but you can see she's got strong revenue. She didn't need to do this, but they did. And they've added it on to already what they're doing. Disclosures for the company. Now, I've already jumped into these. There are two of them I think you should consider. The top one, absolutely. That's good news. Anytime you see an SC13G, 13B, this is telling you you've just had a new investor in the company. When they buy enough shares, they actually get a percentage of the company and they got to file one of these. Up here is who is doing the buying? Streeterville Capital. They have bought... 4 million shares and they are now proud owners of virtually 10% of the company. We got a second one here also for 4 million shares, almost another 10%. A third one, you see you can have more than one per filing. We've got three investors right now, each doing the same. 4 million shares at roughly 10% of the company. So basically, we have just had 30% of the company bought up by an investor today. Do you think they know something we don't? I'm thinking they do. The other one we need to consider, not such good news, not the way I'm reading it. This is a 424B3. Now this is telling me, from what I can understand, they're exercising warrants. Anytime a warrant is exercised, it gives birth to a new share and the warrant disappears. Well, they've got 150 million warrants that they're thinking of exercising. That would be 150 million more shares Think about it now, our outstanding share count is only 26 million. This would be over 600% increase in the shares or 600% dilution in the shareholder value. So this is concerning. I need to look at it more. I don't see a date. There's no date here when it's going to happen, but uh, it looks imminent and I'm not liking that part of it. So what do we got left? The news. So we've got two pieces of news here recently you need to consider. On top of what they're doing with their interior intelligence, they have added chat GPT to real-time location system. And they say this is benefiting them in all sorts of ways. Then we have the dynamite news come out. The company enters into a definitive merger agreement with XTI Aircraft Company, developer of vertical lift crossover airplane also known as the VLCA. This news came out today. They tell us here, the proposed transaction will create a public company engaged in developing vertical takeoff and landing VTOL aircraft and offering real-time location systems technology. XTI conditional pre-orders of more than 700 aircraft could generate revenues up to approximately $7.1 billion. 
proposed merger is expected to be completed by the fourth quarter of 2023. They tell us here that the company, a leading provider of real-time location systems, today announced it has entered into a definitive merger agreement with XTI Aircraft Company, an aviation company developing the TriFan 600, a fixed-wing vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Now, they have got a value from two different sources. An independent financial advisory firm has valued the merger to be worth 252 to 343 million. But a second evaluation was done by comparing what this company does to other companies doing the same sort of thing. And they say, no, nah, this is approximately $1.6 billion value. That is a huge, huge difference. Now they say here, we further believe that our future capital plans are supported by the existing strong demand for the TriFan 600. This is evidenced by the more than 700 conditional pre-orders we have, condition on that they can deliver. These pre-orders represent potential gross revenues of approximately $7.1 billion based on the current list price of $10 million per aircraft. Inpexian shareholders are getting a meaningful interest in this. Basically, the company will own 40% of this new company, which means we have 40% value in it as well. So I think it's hot, folks. This is where aviation is going to. I don't know why we didn't do this a long time ago. And the neat thing is, reading information down here about the company, XTI Aircraft Company is an aviation business based near Denver, Colorado. XTI is guided by a leadership team with decades of experience, deep expertise, and success bringing new aircraft to market, including more than 40 FAA certified new aircraft configurations. So this isn't like a startup company. They have brought planes to market before. This is just a new kind of plane. Now, I don't know how fast it's going to get there, but the news is hot. You saw the volume today. It was incredible. If we can catch that a couple more times, we could see some good gains. Hopefully, before those warrants get cashed in. Sometimes you need a magnifying glass, but that is a perfect, atypical breakout chart. It's a little extended, but I'm loving it. This is INPX, six-month, four-hour view. About six months ago, we had a high of $3.75. That was in mid-November. We had a weak attempt to break the 200 here, a solid attempt to try to break out here, which she failed at, and she fell back down underneath the 200. She hit a low bubble here of about 11 cents. She did that at the end of June, and now... Just with that news, she has stopped her downtrend. I think she was going to continue falling. Doesn't look like anything was going to pick her up. But that sort of news, and she launched. She went from about 15 cents up to almost 40 cents. Like I said, about 150% gains there. She did pull back, and she is roughly at 28, 29 cents right now. The volume, it was only there today. There is no other volume. The oscillators are only strong today. She ripped today. 20-day, one-hour view. Not a lot different. Now, the one thing I want to do here, folks, is I want to bring us in on the Fibonacci. I told you that's what made up my mind that this was a good deal. I grab my Fibonacci and I poke the bottom of the surge and I drag it to the top of the surge. And then I go looking for the center of this. Now, they've got a line there, but I like to put another line there, right there. All right, I'm going to get rid of the Fibonacci because I am really only interested. You can play any of those lines there. They are all supports and resistances that the price will respect. Even though they may not attach to anything in past history, they are legitimate. But I'm going to bring this down right now, and all we're going to keep is that 50% mark. What I'm looking for is any surge. I don't care how big it is. When it hits the top and comes back down, however far that fall is, I don't want it to come past the 50% mark. Now, it's okay if it comes under. If it's doing a magnet, if it's hanging on to the underside like a monkey, that's fine. If it goes down and comes back up on top, that's fine. Just stay at the 50% mark. If you can stay here or above, you have a greater probability of climbing. 
If you come underneath, chances are you will fall to the next strongest SMA. So this is looking really good. One hour chart, only the one day is looking sweet. Everything is looking sweet. Five day, five minute. All right, now this at least gives us an idea of what's going on. There's our support at the 50% mark. That is half of that surge. She came down and look, she bounced right on it, didn't she? Bounced right on it, hit it a second time, third time, fourth time. Oops, fell under it. Oh, we're back up on top. This is what I'm talking about. Even though that isn't attached to anything in past history, it is a legitimate support. And as long as we stay above that, I'm confident. So this is looking good. The oscillators, everything is a bit weak. She had a big run. She came down. She's tired. Let her take a rest. She's laying down right now. What's probably happening is she's going to go sideways waiting for this 200-day SMA here to come up underneath her and tap her along. And then she should start to move. But we've got a huge catalyst here, and there was a lot of volume today. I can't imagine it's just going to turn off tomorrow. Can you? Oh, it's been a long time since we've looked at DRCR, Dear Cashmere Holdings. Have they still got that name? Weren't they supposed to change it to Swifty a long time ago? We looked at this stock five times last year through February and May. We were very excited about them because they were getting into sports betting. They already had this app that you could use to spend your money, spend your crypto, shop around, stuff like that. But then they came out with a secondary app for sports betting, a lot like Tinder. It's based on impulse betting. Can you imagine that? Impulse betting. You swipe right for yes, you swipe left for no. And it works in real time on short periods of time. Imagine you're watching a baseball game in real time and your favorite batter steps up to the plate. Bink! A bet pops up. Is your favorite batter going to get on base? $5 bet. You got 15 seconds to decide. Right? I think impulse betting is going to be hot. That's what I thought back then. Well, they just had news come out about their first financials where they made money. Yeah, impulse betting is really hot. They did a lot more than I thought they were going to do. Now, the chart is set up for that atypical breakout, but she's just starting. She's down low, but she is breaking through the 50. But I'm thinking this company has a lot of followers and it was big revenues. And the next financial that comes out will be just as impressive because I'm sure it's going to get bigger and bigger as they expand. DRCR, she finished the day at nine cents with about 22 and a half percent gains today. She's on the pink tier. I thought she was on the QB before, and we were thinking she was going to uplist. That's what they had planned. Guess that didn't happen. They still have their verified profile and transfer agent, though, so everything looks good here. Since I've basically already told you what the company does, let's look at the relative volume. Oh, that's disappointing. I thought it was going to be a lot higher than that. She's been doing a mere 103,000 average over the last 30 days. Today, she did do more than triple that at 369,000 shares. Not big numbers, but we do have more interest. Share structure for DRCR. Got about 54 million in the outstanding share count. Subtract the 33 million from the insiders. Looks like we get a float of about 21 million. Financials for the company. This is where the excitement lies. At the end of 2022, you can see they finally started making real money. They did $25 million for the entire year. Now, they're going to have to tweak their profit margin because they only got to keep about 10% of that. So, $25 million over the entire year. Very first quarter of 2023, they've already done over $19 million. So, I think impulse betting is going to make them a lot of money. It is growing quickly. Disclosures for DRCR, nada. We don't have anything here, so let's take a look at that news. Looking at the most current news we've got, one from June, June 5th, and one from yesterday. Swifty Global announces acquisition of business-to-business -business contracts and technology from GLN Networks, LTD, in five countries. They got licenses for their gambling app in five countries in Africa, Northern Africa. And they've just applied for countries down in Southern Africa.
Now, they've already got a license for the most prestigious UK gambling license. That is a huge one. Gambling is part of the culture there. I was there 10 years. No problem. Blends right in. They've also got the Caracas license. I think I'm saying that right. That covers 50 countries. So they just keep expanding and they're going to be making more money. The very last piece of news is all about that. The money. Swifty Global accelerates growth following strong performance and first full year of operations. Check this out, folks. They tell us here in only its first 12 months of trading, Swifty has already delivered $68 million in revenue and profitable cash flow. We saw $25 million for the last quarter in 2022, about $20 million for the first one in 2023. Well, that's $45 million. Well, they're telling us they're at $68 million. So you can see this train is a rolling. Having recently applied for licenses in new territory, Swiftly will soon be rolling out the new version of its platform as part of its scale-up strategy, which is expected to deliver increased revenue and profitability for the company. Swifty aims to complete its name and ticker change with FINRA as soon as possible. Yeah, 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 we've heard it before. <laughs> Furthermore, this is sweet. Swifty has decided that it will delay the filing of its S-1 registration statement. You file an S-1 when you're going to do a public offering and put more shares on the market. They're not doing it. Swifty has already applied for its gambling licenses in South Africa and Ireland and will provide further information when these licenses are available. Such licenses are typically between six to nine months for approval. And finally, we get a quote here from Nicholas Link. He is the chairman of the company. I have the utmost confidence in the company, their products, and the team to become a billion dollar company. Along with our shareholders, we are very disappointed in the share price of the company. However, I believe this presents a significant buying opportunity for genuine medium and long-term investors. Based on pure fundamentals, the company stock is significantly discounted and, in my view, the business represents a significant opportunity. And I'm inclined to agree with them. Now that they're making strong revenues and they just keep growing and we know they're going to get bigger and bigger, I think this is a great opportunity. I've always wanted to get into a gambling company, <laughs> but, but most of them are just too big. They're not penny stocks anymore. And this one was way back then and it just wasn't getting things done. Now they're making money. That's what I was waiting for. Now I'm interested. Let's go take a look at that chart. That's Dear Cashmere Holding, ticker DRCR. That's a one year, one day chart. I brought it up so that you could see that low that just hit here a couple of days ago is actually a 52 week low. Our 52 week high hit in January, that was 43 and a half cents and the low is just under six cents. Dropping down to that six month, four hour view. There's your high bubble at 43 and a half cents. She came down through the 200 and did not slow her descent, hitting that 52 week low here just a couple of days ago. And off of that, she is now bouncing. Now, we know the volume wasn't all that big, 369,000 today. But look at it compared to the days before. The volume is growing right now. She's bounced off that 52-week low from underneath all the SMAs, and she is now sitting right on top of the 50-day SMA. Yeah, she's a long ways from that. I see that as a lot of gain. That 200 is up there at 14 cents, and this 50 is down here at 9 cents. Oscillators, you can see with all this volume right here, we are in recovery. Our PPO is pushing up that blue line. Our ADX is pushing down. When I see my ADX trend continuation going down and this one going up, it's a guarantee that the price is climbing. So that's looking good. We got a crossover on our MACD and green bars accumulating, looking nice. And our RSI is currently just under 55. 55 is the least I want to see it. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Downhill trend, then a drop down to that 52-week low. And from there, she's just been climbing. She's been working methodically across every single SMA, including the 200. She pierced it. She broke it. I'm always looking for that first piercing. And then she fell back 
only landing on the nine day. She didn't lose any strength. She's not way down here at the 50 or the 20. She's up there. That doesn't look bad. We got a crossover now in our PPO. We've crossed the signal line. There's a little bit of pullback because of that last bar here, but outside of that, it is looking strong. Coming down to our five day, five minute. We've had a trend change. You can see she was coming down, hit that low, and she has bounced up. And look at that perfect bar right there. Wick on each side. She ripped across all of her SMAs, jumped on that nine day escalator, hit a high today of 10.8 cents. Once she hit that, she did fall back, going through her nine day, but she's sitting there on top of her 20. She could have gone a lot further. This looks not bad to me. She has cooled off on her oscillators. That fall definitely brought everything down. But it's all about the money. Show us the money. That's all we've been screaming at this company for a long time. And now they're doing it. And now another financial is due. I'm not quite sure what day it's due. I'd go look and find out. Because I think when it comes out, that's going to be the extra oomph this needs to get it to break out over the 200. And we could see it rip, folks. This company is now making money and there's no backing up from this point on. Now, I've shown you three good stocks here. They've all got catalysts. They've all got hot charts. But I've only given you enough to get you interested, not to get you to invest. I'm not licensed, folks. I'm only giving you my opinion. So please, go do some more due diligence. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.